Four Women is an album of music for solo piano by Vitislava Kaprilova, Florence Price, Ethel Bilsland, and Margaret Bonds. I came across Florence Price's music when I was studying. Um, there was a course about early 20th century music and our professor had um, a listening list as well as a reading list. And there were two pieces, one by Florence Price and one by Margaret Bonds on a particular week where we were looking at black women composers. And it was a huge moment, I guess, for me, almost having to do a double take, realizing, wow, you know, black women compose music. It was something that I'd never been aware of before. I'd been somewhat aware of the fact that there were black classical musicians, just thinking about Samuel Coleridge Taylor. Um, but black women composers, that was something that completely blew my mind. And then what I was really interested in with Florence Price's music is how she actually didn't engage with jazz, which might have been an expectation, you know, for her to blend jazz and classical forms, but it, her inspirations went really far back in terms of African-American folk music, um, plantation songs and dances and, you know, the rites and rituals around um, sort of slave culture. That's where she drew a lot of her influence and yeah, inspiration. And it was something that I'd never heard before. And her music just instantly um, connected with me. So with Florence Price, something that's really sort of stood out to me is this, uh, the fact that she uses E minor a lot. And when she's conveying these sort of spiritual type melodies, this key of E minor just seems to work so well. So I can demonstrate um, the first theme from her sonata in E minor. And it just sounds so rich, and I don't know if there's any other key that could convey that theme, really. So Margaret Bonds was a student and later a friend of Florence Price, so I guess it's sort of fitting that I learnt about them around the same time, um, because the first piece that I ever heard by Margaret Bonds was Troubled Water, which is also in E minor, and which is why I have this idea that there's something really rich about this key that you know these composers are clearly drawn to and I remember hearing the introduction to Troubled Water which goes like this and it just captivated me because I couldn't I didn't know where it was taking me, but it was really exciting. Um, and then the theme comes in, but it, it's the theme of the spiritual wade in the water, um, but it's it's in three, four. So it, it gives it a, I don't know, a sort of lilt almost. And the title Troubled Water, I guess that maybe comes from the fact that it's not in the stable sort of four, four um, time signature. So when the theme comes in, it sounds like this. And it just really takes off and it's an incredible piece of writing. I feel like Margaret Bonds really progresses a lot of what Florence Price establishes um, in terms of taking the spiritual, but also bringing in jazz and blues, as well as having this sort of classical form and these romantic harmonies. Um, I think the, the pieces complement each other really well. I feel like with Kapraleva, that's a great example of looking for something and not really knowing what you're looking for. Um, when I came across Kapraleva, I was really curious to know who Martineau's female contemporaries were. 
I didn't have any names to go by. It was just a thought in terms of, oh, I wonder who his contemporaries were. And that's how I came across Kapralova. And there's an organization called the Kapralova Society and they became an excellent resource for me, just finding out more about scores and how to really interpret this music and finding out more about who this composer was. Um, because she isn't well known at all. Um, she should be, uh, but she died at the age of 25. When male composers or musicians die young, it's a lot more rock and roll. But with Kapralova or women composers, especially um, of an earlier time, it's almost like they just become forgotten, really. And, and that's been the case with Kapralova. Her career was incredibly promising. In fact, she achieved a lot during her time just being very respected by her peers. Um, and that just seemed to disappear um, with her, you know, dying young. Divnova Preludia, or the April Preludes, um, that was the first set of pieces that I heard by Kapralova. And there's just something about those warm chords at the beginning that, I don't know, felt very familiar to me. And it was just an instant connection to how she expressed herself. I think there's a sense of naivety in her music, um, and but also maturity, and it's just such a a mix of emotions. I think it reflects a very sort of deep and complex person. Again, I was just blown blown away by her by her language. Um, the fact that okay, her music can be very dissonant at times, but it's also very accessible. And I just found that a lot of what she was saying in her music made a lot of sense to me. Um, and then when I heard Sonata Appassionata, I mean, it's it's a huge work. And again, it, it's just got such rich emotion to it. And then when I learned that she was 18 when she composed it, I was just completely surprised. But it, it shows that she really knew what she wanted to say as a composer, even being so young. Um, she had a strong sense of her voice, I think, and I, maybe that's what really spoke to me. Over a year ago, I had the opportunity to present this evening of music called A Celebration of Women in Music. And that was held at the British High Commissioner's house in um, Singapore. And the High Commissioner's wife, Anne, was so interested in this program and she was incredibly supportive and I guess one of the reasons why she was so connected to this program is because her grandmother was a composer and her grandmother's called Ethel Billsland. She had the birthday party and so after the event I sort of took pictures of the of each page of the score and worked with it um, I was sort of very wary to take the score home because I think it was it's from 19, 1918 I think um, and Ethel Bilzand is not um, you know if you search for her music it's you're gonna have a hard time finding the scores basically. I spent some time with these pieces and I think the fact that she um, she dedicates each one to a nephew is just it's so sweet and so endearing and I think it, it reinforces how women's roles 
are so tied up with family. Um, and it's lovely that she's able to sort of extend her craft as a composer to that, you know, her role as an auntie as well. It's lovely. So I've learned in this process that Ethel Bilsand has composed a lot, um, a lot of large scale works that are all in manuscript um, form at present. And uh, part of the reason for that is after, um, well, at the beginning of World War II, she felt that she couldn't compose anymore. She had to support her family. And so she taught um, voice at the Royal Academy of Music and composition sort of took the back seat. Um, but I, I think these, these stories are so important because when we, we think about, you know, why, why aren't there any women composers? Well, you know, these are the reasons why we don't necessarily know about them because their roles are sort of stretched to more, um, I guess, more conventional, more sort of familial positions, basically. And they have to make a choice and sometimes make sacrifices. So what's really exciting about this recording is that the birthday party hasn't been recorded before. And so even though Ethel Bilzand is perhaps more known as a, as a voice professor, the great thing about this album is that it's going to open us up to her history as a composer. It seems that there is a real movement around women composers and I guess the empowerment of women in general. Um, and I, I see this album as being part of that wider conversation about women and representation and diversity. And I hope that it, it inspires musicians to think about their choices when it comes to repertoire. Um, I hope that it inspires uh, people that enjoy just listening to music to, I guess, think a little bit more about whether or not, you know, think about what they might be missing by sort of listening to the to the canon, I guess, all the time. Um, but I guess as well, being a teacher, the most important thing I think is for people who don't necessarily see themselves reflected in this history to, you know, see a composer like Florence Price or Kapralova and feel welcomed in this sphere and feel that it's accessible and that there's, they can achieve anything that they want to in this as a composer, as a performer, and to know that there were people before them doing this and that there is a future for them yeah, in this. This album is called Four Women and is directly influenced by Nina Simone and her song Four Women. And Nina Simone always aspired to be a classical musician and race basically got in the way of that path. And the song Four Women is, is just so powerful because it speaks to the experiences of African-American women um, during that time. And the way in which I was influenced in terms of naming this album for women is, I guess, reimagining, you know, if Nina Simone had had the opportunity to be a classical musician, she'd be telling very different stories. And that's where, I guess, my four women comes in, sort of progressing that conversation and looking at other women composers. And I guess recognizing that we're in a time where we can tell, I guess, more diverse stories as well. Um, so I guess what makes this album quite different is the fact that I'm blending all these very different narratives that we usually just encounter maybe in jazz or um, in a very European musical tradition. And all of these narratives are coming together in this album, um, which I don't think you would really find anywhere else. <laughs> 